I will admit, I almost completely forgot about this. It's just that, you know, I said when entering Charge Tone Cave, you know, I'm going to go through that place, and then when I reach Mr. Alton, I am going to uh, come back here. But it took so much time for me to uh, make it through Charge Tone Cave that I eventually just forgot about uh, um, time-based events completely, you know, the ones based on the seasons, at the very least. So, yeah, at least it's a, it's a good thing that I thought about it, because, you know, at one point I was like, wow, the month of September is almost over, and, and then I was like, I realized, oh shit, that, that trainer at the Ferris wheel, I still have to fight her. So, here we go. Now that's done, and by the way, you may be noticing that I'm using Sigilith. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that should be obvious is because, well, I've used Excadrill so much lately, it has a pretty big level advantage now. Um... So, I want to use the other two a little too bad. Um, too bad Lilligant isn't exactly friendly in the area we're going into, which is, of course, uh, the flying-type gym. You really don't want to use Lilligant a whole lot there. And, uh, by the way, when I'm in the Ferris wheel, uh, don't worry. I'm aware there's massive, massive slowdown for some reason. And uh, I think it's just the sound, to be perfectly honest. I don't think... I don't think the graphics are slowed down in any way, it's just the sound. Because, um, well, I guess these graphics are fairly intensive. I don't know if the problem is the emulator or anything like that, but at least it doesn't run at, like, 8 FPS like that one Red Super A of Mario 64 I saw once. And I bet since you'll be begging me uh, for the link to that uh, particular video, I'm going to throw it in the movie description, I guess. Since every time I make an allusion to something that uh, I don't link to in the movie description, I inevitably uh, end up getting asked the link. So, yeah, I'm, ju I'm just going to prevent all that by putting it uh, right there in the movie description from the start. So, um... Wanna ride it again? <laughs> I thought you were afraid of heights, young lady. Anyway, now we can head back to Miss Troughton and take on the Mile High Club. Once again, m most gym puzzles in this game are just this. They're like, you know, they look intimidating, but when you but when you get the hang of it, it's really nothing but a linear path with some underlings along the way. So, uh, please take this fresh water. Man, he, he's wasting no time in giving me that. Fresh water, unfortunately, isn't really going to cut it anymore from this point on, because it only restores 50 HP. It was a full healing in the first two gyms, and even in the other uh, ones after that, it was still fairly decent healing, but now it's just not quite enough anymore. So, too bad they're ne they, they never upgrade to lemonades or uh, soda pops, stuff, uh, stuff like that. So, this gym puzzle involves going through cannons! BANG! Well, of course, g given that the local gym leader is a master of bangs, I shouldn't really be that surprised. So, yeah, uh, the, the, uh, there are a few puzzles, most of them are really easy to solve. And um, it, 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 I guess the idea of that first one was just, you know, um, what do I do now? That cannon sent me into nothingness. Well, you just have to climb into the cannon again and get to this area right here. So whenever a cannon doesn't work the way you want it to in one direction, just try it in another one. That's basically the gist of this gym. But I'll be honest with you, this looks brutally unsafe being shot out of a cannon! I mean, I know this is a video game and all, and uh, the Game Freak staff wasn't really paying too much attention to realism, but seriously, uh, put, it, put yourselves in the shoes of those people trying to tackle the gym. You are going to have more than a few bruises when you're done, especially since, as we saw, there's nothing to, uh, there's nothing to absorb the, the impact when you land, and even, you know, getting launched must be pretty fucked up in a way, so why does the Pokemon League keep this gym open? I mean, yeah, it's absolutely brutally unsafe, and yeah, it looks cool, but when you stop and think about it, this gym shouldn't even exist. Of course, I know that they changed the puzzle to something else in black and white, too, of course, because you don't want to be doing the same puzzles as in the first game, goes without saying. 
So, uh, now that we're on this aerial journey, something that I wanted to talk about, a few people have asked me about it and how I felt about it, and since then it also made a Smogon's front page, is, uh, the... Well, I wouldn't say... I, I, I could, could I call it suspect testing? Well, they are trying to uh, trim down the rule set of the Uber metagame a bit, because the idea is that the Uber metagame basically never get shaken up aside from when there is a new game coming out because the other tiers have bans and promotions and demotions and stuff like that to, to keep them fresh and interesting but the uber metagame only changes once or twice per generation so they're trying something new they're trying to eliminate redundant rules in uh, the Uber metagame, and they are looking at five rules in particular. Species Clause! Species Clause I really don't think is going to go away anytime soon, especially in Ubers where there's one Pokémon that's head and shoulders above the rest. I'm talking, of course, about Arceus. If they get rid of Species Clause, they're almost definitely going to be a... Uh, two or three Arceuses inside the same team, in every team, and is that a good idea? I honestly do not think so, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, yes, I know that the Kyogre looks like it's on top of the stats, but as, as I've said before, uh, I'm against counting each of Arceus's types separately, because the type change is... Uh, caused by, uh, the, by the ability of Arceus, so it's just not the... I mean, I mean, you don't see a both of Darmanitan's abilities being separated because one of them induces a form change, do you? No, so it should be the same for Arceus, in my opinion. And yes, I'm aware that it's not what Species Clause was designed for in the first place. It was, it was caused by, you know, other things that caused uh, the metagame to be unfun. Species Clause, which, have, which has been around since uh, the first generation, uh, when people learned how to abuse the fact that it's not there for for purposes that aren't very entertaining, to be perfectly honest with you. Sleep Claws, I don't think is going to go away anytime soon either. Because, well, there's one Pokemon in Ubers that's really a threat because of its uh, sleeping ability, and it's, of course, Darkrai. So, should they get rid of Sleep Claws, Darkrai is probably going to completely dominate with its 80% accuracy sleep move, which it can just keep spamming and spamming and, you know, maybe not spamming, but used properly, I would imagine that it would be a complete disaster. So, yeah, I can't see it going away either, and of course, imagine if both Species Claws and Sleep Claws go away. Every team is going to be three Arceuses and three Dark Rays. Just wonderful. So, uh, but then again, what do I know? Maybe they're going to find that uh, it's actually not that bad. It's not as bad as it would be in theory, but, um, Still, those are my expectations. I could be completely far off. Uh, one-hit KO Claws and Evasion Claws. <laughs> are you kidding me? Can you possibly imagine Smogon getting rid of rules that are meant to reduce the element of luck? Now, I'll be honest, I'm in favor of uh, Evasion Claws for Double Team and Minimize, not so much for Bright Power and Lax Incense. And I'm also in favor of... Uh, one hit KO, uh, one hit KO claws because, uh, well, if only for, for the fact that uh, a Krabby could potentially effortlessly take down an Arceus, which would honestly suck. So, yeah, I'm in favor of keeping these two rules, and I don't think they're going away anytime soon because this is Smogon after all. And the ban on Moody, which also applied in Ubers, well, that is the one rule that I could potentially see go away, because since there are no Ubers with Moody, uh, it's, uh, the impact of such a ban would be much less than uh, in Overuse, so... OW! RIGHT IN THE FREAKING WALL! See what I was saying about this whole thing being unsafe? How has this gym not been shut down yet? Anyway, I'm gonna change my lead now. I used Sigilift to let it gain some experience, but since it's the gym leader, I'm gonna go back to Excadrill for Rock Slide goodness. 
Uh, did you enjoy flying? Well, how are my bones not powdered milk yet? So, um, this time let's try something else. Do I really want to make a joke out of this? No, of course not, because <laughs> everyone knows she was talking about a battle anyway. So, um, she is going to lead with, uh, Swoobat. That's right, that was... I, I knew she had an Unpheasant and a swan of but for some reason I had a brain fart and forgot the, what her other team member was. So, a uh, rock slide on Swoobat with uh, any 11 level advantage should kill it in one hit easily. There we go. Of course, uh, the, the exception would, would be if it misses entirely. Swana, you know what? I'm going to be ballsy here and use Lilligan for this because, well, it's got water moves which are super effective against Excadrill. And, well, Lilligan doesn't have any super effective moves against Swana. But I'm going to try Giga Drain nonetheless. I'm going to try and do this because Lilligan is really falling behind in terms of levels. How much damage is there slash going to be? Ow! 66! So, um, at least Swana's in the red. L wait, let me guess. Uh, potion, recovery, or yeah, hyper potion. Totally called it. So, uh, let's uh, try Giga Drain again and see... If uh, she's going to use another one, uh, well, no. It was a critical, thanks for the timely critical here, massive HP recovery, which is why I didn't feel as bad for using Lilligan, because it, it doesn't have the raw power Excadrill has, but it still has a few tricks up, up its sleeve. So now, the uh, last Pokemon is going to be Unpheasant. Uh, Swana was her ace, by the way, not Unpheasant, even though she's using Unpheasant last. So Rock Slide connects, and that should be it. That's right! That's all she wrote! And now I have six gym badges. So this was the Mile High Club, and it was yet another easy victory, even though I held back a bit against that Swana for long-term implications. And I did, I'm trying to remember, have I had a death this LP. I might have done a sacrifice against... Uh, yeah, I think I did a sacrifice against Chili, but uh, other than that, I don't think there uh, I've ever been overwhelmed in terms of damage uh, enough to lose an actual team member. So, Pokemon up to level 70 will obey me, and I'm going to get to the TM Acrobatics, I believe, which is... Well, not used all that often because it requires you to not use a, to not use a held item in order to increase its power. Its regular power is 55, which is doubled to, to 110 if you don't have a held item. It's not that common, but there are a few uses for the for this move, especially in combination with uh, a gem such as the flying gem. Though MB Palm also can sometimes use the normal gem in combination with uh, Fake Out and then proceed to use Acrobatics as a very high-powered move. And Gliscor can also use uh, Acrobatics in combination with flinging a Toxic Orb, but that set is pretty suboptimal. There are many other things that Gliscor can do better than this, even though it was a very popular set early on this generation. Not many people look that good being shot out of a cannon. Hey, <laughs> well, I was I was even rammed into a wall once, just to, just to give you an idea. So, oh, I totally forgot about that. And wants to talk to me once I'm done uh, with this gym. And once again, he's going to repeat the same thing he says every time that you know humans are evil for abusing uh, for abusing Pokemon like that. And now he's going to proceed to talk to my Pokémon, that's right, and has the rare capability of being able to communicate with a Pokémon directly, considering that, well, he grew up uh, isolated from other humans and was put with other Pokémon. Instead, Pokémon that were neglected, that suffered. And that stupid Excadrill gives him all my personal info. Why not give him my credit card number while you're at it? So, uh, Anne is going to realize that I and my Excadrill trust each other, and uh, this is where you can see that uh, his uh, inflexibility about how all Pokémon are good and all humans are, in are inherently evil 
that is is starting to fade away and uh, he's still talking and I'm running out of time so I guess we're going to uh, keep the rest of that riveting conversation for next time <laughs>